to take the derivative, what would we have to do to take the derivative? Uh, okay, yeah. We well we have two options. We could do the quotient rule as is, or we could rewrite the square root of x as x to the one half and then move it to the numerator, simplify algebraically, and then just use our power rule. Well, this is an integration problem. Um, guess what? We don't have a quotient rule for integration. So we're going to have to go with that second technique. We're going to have to simplify this algebraically before we can apply any rules of integration. So keep the notation. We haven't done anything with the integral yet, or we're not going to in this step. Right now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite that square root of x as x to the negative one-half. Okay, the one-half, because that's the square root is a power. But I want to move it to the numerator so that I can combine some terms here. Okay? I'm going to do one more step of algebraic manipulation before I actually integrate. I'm going to distribute this x to the negative one-half inside the parentheses. So when you multiply, you add exponents. So that's x to the positive one-half when you multiply it by x. And then when you multiply it by 1, it is, of course, itself. Now we can deal with the integration, with the anti-differentiation instructions. Okay, It's a power, so we add 1 to the exponent. Divide by the new exponent, add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, don't forget plus c. We're not going to leave it in that form, okay, we don't leave fractions within fractions, so we need to flip them over. So that's 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus 2 x to the 1 half plus c. Now at this point, this is going to be a multiple choice question, so you look at your answer choices. They may be in that form, or they may possibly factor out. Um, what we can factor out here is both of these have a 2, and then we can factor out x to the 1 half. So if we do that, we've got 1 third x to the first plus 1, still with that plus c on the end. Yeah, as long as you don't forget it. And, I mean, it's multiple choice, so it's either going to be there or it's not going to be there, but I'm just trying to stress that at that point. And probably if they go through and factor it, they're doing that so that they can write that as the square root of x instead of the one-half, since the original problem started No, no. Um, they either, all your answer choices either all have plus C or sometimes they, they do leave it off. Um, but there are a whole lot of questions that are indefinite integration. Um, they're usually either asking you for a particular solution, which we're going to look at um, in a few minutes, or all the answer choices either have them or them. Yeah. Okay, let's look at a trig one. Okay, we've got the uh, antiderivative of the side of x over cosine squared of x. Now, yes.
tangent, okay? But it's not, okay? It is sine over cosine squared. So, not a big deal, okay? We can handle this. What you should do is you should break up that cosine squared. Okay? Now, this isn't... Well, really, we're using identities. Y'all remember those identities? Okay. Right, okay. So, but it, it's not that bad. Okay, these are kind of easier ones. Really, all we have to recognize this as is sine over cosine is tangent. One over cosine is secant. Is that the derivative of something? Yeah, it is. What is it the derivative of? Secant. Remember, the derivative of secant of x is secant x tangent x. Now, it doesn't matter that tangent is written before secant. It's multiplied, so the order doesn't matter. If it really bothers you, you can take an extra step and change the order. Um, but it, it's the same thing. Okay? And that's all it is. Okay? Exactly. Don't waste time doing it on the exam. But in your notes, if it bothers you, you can do it. Okay? So, yes, you need to know the trig derivatives slash integrals. Uh, you need to be able to recognize those pretty, pretty easily. So, moral of the story. At this point, okay, at this point, if you see something like this, okay, um, if you are asked to integrate something um, that's a quotient or it's got several different trig functions in it, uh, you shouldn't, you, you should automatically think that there is a way that I can rewrite this so that I can either just use my power rule or so that I can use just my straight up derivatives for trig functions. Um, I should be able to do that easily, okay? Uh, a little bit down the road, we will learn a couple of different techniques for more difficult problems, but right now, it's either power rule or it's a trig derivative, and that's it, okay?